worship you, Lord. He's coming on the clouds, kings and kingdoms will bow down. Every chain will break, his broken hearts declare his faith. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah, his roaring in power and fighting our bow before me. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. He is the break the chain, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before me. Oh, we bow before you, Lord. Open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. is roaring in power and fighting our battle. bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before me. Who can stop the Lord? For who can stop the Lord? Oh, oh. Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord? No one who can stop, who can stop the Lord, who can stop the Lord, no one who can stop the Lord, hey, who can stop the Lord Almighty, who can stop the Lord, our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. Roaring in power and fighting our battle, every knee will bow before me. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that will save for the sins of the world. Here's the breath of day, and every knee will bow before the Worship you, Lord. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Quiere bebe nada más de ti. We worship you. Oh, we exalt you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your favor.
shines like the sun all of its brilliance the king the king this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you Lift up your voice and sing, He is worthy. You deserve all the praise. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered, sing, worthy is the Lamb who was slain.
the sun where to stand in the morning who taught the ocean you can only come this far and who showed the moon where to hide till
Father, we thank you. We thank you for your presence in this place. You are an awesome God. We love you with all our hearts, Jesus. Have your way in us this morning. We give you all the glory. Amen and amen. Thank you, church. You may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Come, give the Lord a good praise offering this morning. Come on, that's not good enough. Give him a good praise offering. Let's hear a shout of praise. Amen. Thank you, Shelda. Thank you to all of you. That was good singing this morning. Praise God for you and uh, all the rest of you. God bless you. So good morning. Welcome in Jesus' name. Is everybody happy this morning? Wonderful. I'm glad that you are here. Pray the Lord will bless you. You'll know that next uh, Sunday is Christmas. Yeah, we have these services every week. <laughs> every week we are here. Every Sunday. Same time, 8 o'clock. Those of you on live stream, we also have this. Every Sunday. We have same team. Same music as well. So the Lord bless you all. We're happy that you're here this morning. A Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah. So I am walking through Gateway. I see this Santa there. There's this girl from our church. She's 23 or 24, thereabouts. She's sitting on his lap. So I'm saying, darling, what are you doing on Santa's lap? What do you want? She said, I'm not asking for anything, Pastor. I'm asking for my mother's sake. And I asked, what do you ask? That the Santa will give my mother a son-in-law. I am saying, come on. Come on. Man, these people are so smart, man. Ah, awesome people. So good morning. Merry Christmas. God bless you. Welcome to all of you. We have uh, a great uh, servant of the Lord ministering to you this morning. Pushpa, we will pray for you. Eric and Mary are here, uh, children of our dear late brother Tony. Please stand for us. Give them a good round of applause. Hallelujah. I want Zion Matthew to see them. Please put them on the camera. Hallelujah. Cash and his... Zion's a good friend of ours. Cash and his wife celebrating eight years of marriage. Congratulations, Marisha. Oh, yeah. Kenan is here. Rani's son, where is he? Give Kenan. Kenan, happy to have you. That's a good round of applause. Your brother has the right shirt. That shirt is Argentina. Okay. Reg got the right one on. Anyway, Dan Nimi's husband, your 73rd birthday today. I remember when I was 73. Where's this guy? Hallelujah. Brother Dan, happy birthday. Ah, Dan, give him a good round of Denzel Chetty is here, and uh, that's Chella's uh, brother in law. Please give him a good round of applause. Where are you, Denzel? Anybody else that's visiting us the first time, may the Lord bless you abundantly. Great news this week. Uh, Christian Alexander was born to the Pakris. Mr. and Mrs. Pakri have their first grandson. But Freddy says, that's nothing, man. Our grandson is grown now. So, so Freddy and him, they're in competition, fishing partners, but that's all right. That's very good. So uh, all of you, the Lord bless you and the Lord be with you. I'm going to pray very quickly for some people that are traveling. Come Romaine, come Jason. We'll pray for them together with your family. Come, they're traveling to Dubai and Phuket. Pray the Lord will bless them this morning. It's an overseas trip. Anybody else traveling internationally, we just pray for them. Then we'll hand over to the preacher to preach to you this morning. Give him enough time for his sermon today. Uh, these are wonderful fa family of God and uh, we thank God for them. They're going over to Dubai, Phuket, two weeks of holiday. I told the boys, buy whatever you want. Put it on your father's credit card here. Yeah. Father, bless them. Grace accompany them. Every need met. Every mode of travel blessed. All the airport facilities taken care of. The ins and outs, passports, whatever it is. The grace of God upon them. We are praying. Give them a happy holiday. Protect them. Bring them back safely and let the Lord bless their lives. We commend them to you today in the name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Spirit. And pray great grace follow them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Give them a good round of applause. 
Pastor Freddie and his wife are traveling to Johannesburg. They leave this week. Perhaps Seekrib and Steph and the others are traveling as well. May the Lord bless you. Anybody else traveling, going out of town uh, this Christmas holiday? Anybody? Cash and his wife are also traveling. Please, all of you who are traveling, just stand for us. We'll pray for you. We'll just stand where you are. We'll remember you in prayer this morning if you're traveling. Loving Father, uh, we know the roads are not safe, but we ask in the name of Jesus for all of these who are traveling. May the hand of God be upon them. May the grace of God be theirs. I pray, Father, their vehicles will be protected. Their lives will be protected. And Lord, as Sholene prayed earlier on, whatever kind of enjoyment they're going to have, their and their families will be protected. Bring them safely back. Let them have enjoyable holidays. Provide all their needs through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Give the Lord a good praise offering for them. I don't think there's anything else this morning. Nothing else, Vas. Nothing else. Here. Uh, yo, we want to welcome all these uh, senior citizens, uh, the pensioners, and all the rest of them. The, the folk here on these three rows, most of them, uh, don't get the ch a chance to come to church regularly because uh, they have difficulties. But this morning, we're thankful to God that they are here. Pastor Miriam and a team arranged for them to come. They're going to be prayed for later on. And also they have some special gifts for them. Uh, how do I descri describe them? All our very, very special seniors this morning. Give them a lovely round of applause. Come on. Good round of applause. They're all here and I pray the Lord will bless you abundantly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is the preacher here? The pastors, yeah. Thank you, ladies and team. Give the team a good round of applause. Thank you, guys. Music is so good. I don't know if I've missed anything out. Maybe later on the Lord will bless us. Thank you. Thank you. Is your coffee, whatever. Thank you. Put your hands together for Sid this morning as he shares the word of the Lord this morning. And uh, may I just say thank you to all of the people who organized. The dinner, wasn't that dinner a nice one? Ah, the food Sorry. was awesome. The fellowship was good. And uh, some of you, uh, how many of you registered you couldn't come? Let me see your hands, please. You registered, please, all of you. There's a lot of you registered you didn't come. Uh, right, you owe us 300 rand for the dinner. You must just, you know why? Because we prepared for you. So, uh, hands together for Sid, please. Thank you. Well, uh, good morning, everybody. Morning, I greet you in the name of Jesus. It's nice to see you all, and uh, you're looking good. Please greet somebody next to you, and uh, welcome them. Say God bless. Yeah. Say Merry Christmas. Come on. Merry Christmas. Can you believe it? Sure. Uh, but yes, we thank God for His grace, and uh, thank God that we all made it, and uh, you are here uh, this morning. Uh, so God bless you. Uh, and just want to say thanks to uh, Dad for the opportunity, and we greet him and Mum also Pastor Brian and Auntie Noreen. Thank God for them. Let's give them a nice round of applause. We thank God for them and for you. And uh, we pray that this will be a blessed uh, season, a blessed Christmas for you, and that all that you need for you and your family, that God will bless you and honor you as we go into the new year uh, as well. Cash uh, and his wife, eight years anniversary, number three is coming. We thank God for that. Uh, so God bless you. Uh, yes, we must give all those who participated on the weekend, um, the, uh, the Christmas dinner, the senior citizens, the youth, the Sunday school, they all did a great job. So we thank God. And uh, you must, if you want your kids to participate, you must send them. So send them to the youth, send them to the Sunday school so they uh, can get involved. Uh, but yes, I'm going to get straight into the word this morning. And uh, we thank God for his word. And uh, my topic for this morning is unusual things about the first Christmas. Unusual things about the first Christmas uh, that will inspire you. And I just want to bless you and encourage you this morning. Uh, we're going to read Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 and then uh, we'll continue. Uh, so say praise the Lord. 
All right, let's read that together. It's wonderful to read the scriptures publicly. So let's read that. You can say it with me as we go. Uh, now, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit. Come on. And then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about the things, these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife. That which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bring forth the Son. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from his sins. So all this was done that it was full, fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be uh, with child, bear a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, took to him his wife and did not know her till she brought forth uh, her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. We thank God for his word this morning. I know that you're going to be blessed. Thank you. God is so good. Oh, oh God. God is so good. Let's sing, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within, bless his holy name. Father, we thank you for your blessings over us. May each person here today live with a blessing. We thank you for your grace in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Nice to have Joash and Beverly in church. Let's give them a nice round of applause. And Kogi as well, the family. Welcome uh, to you for the first time after many weeks. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, Merry Christmas. And uh, we truly pray that this will be a blessed Christmas for all of you. And what a wonderful time of the year this is. Are you all excited for Christmas? Who's not excited? Put your hand up. Uh, Dad? Oh, okay. But it's almost magical. Christmas is a magical time of the year, especially for the kids. The kids love Christmas, uh, but also for us ad adults. Some of us, uh, we become like kids during the Christmas uh, season. You know, when people say, I'm not really feeling the Christmas spirit, I don't think it's about what's going on on the outside. I think it's more about what you are feeling uh, on the inside. And yes, it's been a tough few years. It's been a tough few years. Uh, you, and maybe you've been uh, going through some stuff and carrying some weights on your shoulders. But really speaking, it's up to you. Tell your neighbor, it's up to you. It's up to you to enjoy Christmas. Uh, it's up to you to enjoy Christmas. And you can become like a kid again. Uh, you can be excited. You can enjoy every moment. Uh, you can take some Turbovite or Baraka and, uh, or Red Bull so you can keep up with the family. You can keep up with the kids, keep up with the family and keep up with the chopping and chopping and all of that and all the activities. Uh, what did one Christmas tree say to the other Christmas tree? Come on, lighten up. <laughs> lighten up. Tell your neighbor, lighten up. Come on. Lighten up. And so it's up to you. Are you going to be the Scrooge uh, during Christmas or the party pooper while everybody is enjoying themselves? You saying, hey, sit down, man, sit down. <laughs> Are you going to be the party pooper, the sour mouth or the Grinch? And, uh, you know, or are you going to be the crazy one in the Santa suit? You put the Santa suit, uh, drink the punch, whether it's spiked or not, and vacuum everything on the table and, uh, and make fun with the young and old. Which one are you going to be? Ask your neighbor, which one are you? You know who's never hungry at Christmas? Do you know who's never hungry at Christmas besides Diren now? Uh, uh, who's never hungry at Christmas is the turkey because it's always stuffed. So, 
So uh, a lot of turkeys are not here today. <laughs> but so, so Christmas is also a very challenging time. And uh, there's bills to pay, there's gifts to buy, there's kids to make happy, there's wife to make happy, there's husband to make happy, uh, in-laws to make happy. That's why find in-laws that are out of town, far away, <laughs> so you don't have to go and see them. And, and then there's work, uh, work parties, staff parties, church, beaches are full of shit now, you know. Uh, the beaches, uh, that's true, that's the reality. You go there. I'm not saying anything bad. Sorry, on live stream. Beaches are full of it. And uh, then there's... Uh, <laughs> I wanted to shock you this morning. Uh, lights, lights that don't co uh, come on. And we're in the dark. The crooks, the crooks are around. They tried to break in here last week. That sh uh, um, the people... Uh, <laughs> they tried to break in here last week. So, uh, uh, so and not forgetting the gifts... Uh, like people will give you that tie that you will never wear in a million years. They'll give you that tie, that bow tie, underwear, that socks. They'll give you one, one time I got one sock. I don't know what they were thinking. And then uh, how many of you got that soap on a rope? You got that? Soap on a rope. I don't know if I feel like hanging myself on that thing, you know. Soap on a rope, that perfume, it smells like methylated spirits. I don't know where they got that from and uh, one one year i got this computer mouse you know which is a it's a very nice gift only thing at that time i didn't even have a computer <laughs> they gave me a computer mouse so but you know that's that's uh, that's how it is but you know amidst all of that as believers and as people of god we know that the most important thing about the festive season is the greatest gift of them all which is christ jesus say amen come on Christ the Savior was born. 2 Corinthians 9, it says, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. That's the most important gift that we have. That is the game changer. And whilst the world celebrates with gifts, parties, holidays, we take it a step further, thanking God for his precious son. Thanking God for his grace. For, uh, John 3, 16, you know, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting uh, life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. We are saved because of Jesus. Say hallelujah. Come on. And so Christmas is about Christ and we know that. We are only blessed because Jesus came into this world. And so this morning we're going to take a look at a few events that occurred around the Christmas story, the Christmas narrative. And I'm sure by now you all are aware of the stuff that took place. The angel appears to Mary, told her about the son that would save the world from sins. Then Joseph and Mary, how they came together. Then the shepherds, how they washed their socks by, I mean, how they watched their flocks by night. Uh, and then uh, the star in the sky above Jesus, the wise men, not three wise men, there wasn't only three, the wise men, uh, you know that, the manger, all of that. But today, I want us to take a look at some of the unusual things, uh, out of the ordinary things that occurred at the first Christmas. And I know this is going to bless you. Say, God bless you. Come on. I know this is going to bless you. Firstly, the parents of Jesus. This was unusual. Uh, Jesus was and is the Messiah. And Messiah means Christ. It means the anointed one, the chosen one, the one who came to deliver us from sin. And the Jews, they read the Old Testament prophecies in Isaiah 42, uh, Isaiah 61, uh, Psalm 16, 22, Daniel 9. Uh, they read the prophecies which promised that God will send a deliverer to, de to save his people from sin and Satan. And so uh, Jesus was the one of a kind. He was a special person, the son of God who was going to be sent to earth to deliver his, uh, God's people. But let's imagine you were given the task to choose Jesus' parents. Let's imagine you and I were given the task to choose the parents of the Savior, the anointed one, the holy one, the chosen one. Who would you choose? What choice would you make? 
And I'm asking that question this morning. If we were honest, we would uh, have to admit we would have not chosen Joseph or Mary. We would have not chosen them in a million years. Why? Because they were very young. Say young, come on. They were very young. Probably uh, uh, historians tell us between the age of 14 to 16. So they were very young parents. And although at the time getting married very young, that was the normal custom of the day. But still, that is extremely uh, young to get married. Think about your child getting married at grade 10 or 11. That's unthinkable because they're not mature enough yet, you know. Our grade 10s, they're only interested in TikToks and pimples and uh, TikTok and pimples and stuff like that. And uh, how are they going to be worried about running a household, taking care of children and all of that? Shalda and I, we got uh, uh, married uh, at, um, uh, we were, at she was 21 and I was 23 uh, years old. And uh, we got married very young. We never spoke about divorce, but we always, almost tried killing each other, I'm telling you <laughs> that, but, but we were very young and immature, and she is still a little bit, <laughs> but, but we, we're getting there, you know, by the grace of God. No, I'm just kidding, you know I'm lying, you know I'm kidding. But so, uh, so, so Joseph, uh, so the parents were very young. And then secondly, Joseph and Mary, they were not married at the time. The Bible says that they were betrothed or engaged. And so they were betrothed or espoused to one another. And this was a binding contract. Uh, but still, you would probably want a stable home for a child. You know, a, a, a home with some stability. Preferably a married couple with a few years under their belt uh, who understood each other and are in a better place. Then thirdly, uh, uh, about these parents, they were involved in somewhat of a scandal. Everybody say scandal. Because Mary and Joseph weren't officially married yet, for a girl to, to get pregnant before marriage, this was a taboo in those times. This was scandalous. Uh, Deuteronomy 22, it outlines the legal issues surrounding an engaged woman having uh, illicit, illicit sexual relationships or, or relations. And uh, if the incident happens in a city, both the woman and the man would be stoned to death. And that's how serious it was. If a rape happens in the countryside, only the man would be stoned. And so it, this was serious things uh, uh, back then. Tell your neighbor, serious, come on. Very serious this was. And so uh, in Matthew chapter 1 verse 19, Joseph initially believed that Mary was unfaithful to him. Because Joseph, her husband, uh, was faithful to the law. He did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. And so, obviously, the angel, we know the angel spoke to Mary and to Joseph and told Joseph, don't leave your wife, stay with her uh, because this is of God. And, uh, but this was some type of conflict in their relationship. This was some type of scandal in their relationship. And so, this uh, was a scandalous relationship. Then, fourthly, about the parents, we would have most probably picked wealthy parents for Jesus. We would have put, uh, picked wealthy parents so that Jesus would have the best of everything. The best education. The, wear the best clothes. Uh, we, would, uh, they, uh, we would choose parents who would buy the best phones for, uh, for Jesus. iPhones, uh, you know, Samsung you almost throw away now. Do you go for the iPhones? Uh, but anyway, but uh, we would have chosen parents who would give the children the best, best phones, best tablets, Xbox, PlayStation, all of those things. We would have also chosen cultured parents. A cultured parent, say cultured, come on. We would have chosen parents who speak nastily, you know. How are they? Uh, come on, let's go to the shop today. Or, you know, parents who have some culture, say culture, come on. The parents who have connections or the parents who have influence, traveled a bit, came from the right areas so that the child would have the right education, the right manners, the right pedigree, etc., Etc. But you know who was God's choice? 
God selected two unlikely people. God selected a poor teenage girl named Mary and an unknown carpenter named Joseph to be the parents of the Savior. And, you know, sometimes if you go to a restaurant and there's no table for you, you just give the guy a few bucks, not from this church, you all don't do that. You give the guy a few bucks and then immediately out of nowhere, that table appears for you. And so you can do that. But Joseph and Mary were so poor, there was no place for them in the inn. They couldn't give a few bucks. They had to sleep in the barn or in the manger. And in the Bible, you know, if you were wealthy, you could offer a lamb as a sacrifice. But if you were poor, uh, you could offer a poor man's offering, which is two turtle doves or pigeons. And this is what Joseph and Mary offered uh, for Jesus as a sacrifice. Uh, two turtle doves indicating that they were poor. And so also Joseph was an ordinary carpenter from Nazareth. Nazareth was the wrong side of town. Nazareth, this, uh, Nazareth was, a, was the wrong side of town. And that reminds me of that song by Journey. You know, you know that song? Just a small town girl living in a lonely world. You know, you know that song? You're acting religious now. It's so holy. <laughs> I know your staff parties. You're dancing. <laughs> yeah, you'll come stand like this. Praise the Lord. I know. Yeah, I know that. Don't stop believing. You know that, sir? Auntie Rachel, you know. No, I haven't got. Okay, haven't got. So, so, Joseph was from the wrong side of town. Nathaniel said in John 1, 46, can anything good come out from Nazareth? And uh, this was, this reminds me of Phoenix. This was just like Phoenix. That's what people say. Can anything good come out of Phoenix? Tell people you're from Phoenix. They give you big eyes. Oh, you know, they stand back. They fright for us if you're from, if you're from Phoenix. You know? And uh, this, was, this was God's unusual choice. This was God's unusual choice. My brothers and sisters, if God can use two young, inexperienced people to carry his glory, God can use you. If God can do that. And uh, how blessed we were by our youth this weekend. And we must treasure our young people. If you want to get your kids involved in church, you must send them to the meetings so that they, they can serve the Lord. Come on, say hallelujah. All of our kids, they have so much of potential. There's doctors, lawyers there. There's artists, songwriters. There's preachers. There's pastors, apostles, evangelists, designers, IT specialists, coders, gamers here. But we need to give them a chance. We need to give our young people a chance. Give them our support. Place responsibility on them and let God use them. 2 Timothy 4.12, it says, Let no one despise your youth. But be an example to the believers in word, conduct, love, spirit, faith, and in purity. And so, you know, despite your age, whether young or old, God can use you. Say hallelujah. Come on. And, uh, you know, also at the time, Joseph and Mary's life was unstable. Uh, they didn't know if they were coming or going with each other. Joseph was in two minds about marrying Mary. And uh, I told you this was a little scandal. There was a stigma attached to it, the young girl as Joseph wanted to divorce her. But you know what? God made it work. God made it work. God restored their trust in each other. God guided and directed them. God blessed them and healed them. God healed their relationship. God reconciled them. And out of a complicated and confusing situation, God did something beautiful. In fact, out of their complicated and complex lives, the greatest miracle in human history took place. They brought forth the Savior, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You know what that tells me? You and I, we must put our complications in the back pocket. Say hallelujah. Come on. Some of you have that Facebook status for your lives. It's complicated. We have that. 
We are in complicated lives, complicated relationships. But you know what? God can work through complicated. God can work through the daily uh, rubbish, the daily trouble, the daily dirt, the daily difficulties. God can use all of that for his glory. Say praise the Lord. Some of you have been through some tough times with your friends, with your family, relationships. And you may be wondering, how can I move on? How can I go forward from that stigma? How can I move forward and, and um, improve my life? How can I, when will I get through this? Well, when the angel met Joseph in Matthew 1, uh, while Joseph was having all these doubts about Mary, there's something about Mary. When uh, Joseph was having these doubts, the angel said, don't be afraid. That which is inside of you is of the Holy Spirit. That which, and so, if you, my brothers and sisters, don't be afraid as you go through challenges in your life. Whether it's you, your children, your auntie, your uncle, your family, your church, whatever it is, don't be afraid. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you. You got the spirit of God and God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Say praise the Lord. So let the Holy Spirit calm all your fears, calm all your doubts, calm all your worries. And then also it seems like Joseph and Mary came from poor backgrounds. They didn't have a lot going for them. Uh, but they were God's choice. They were God's choice. Joseph and Mary were so poor, they went to the park uh, to feed the ducks. The ducks threw bread at them. That's how uh, poor they were. And, uh, and that's, that's how poor they were. They came from a neighborhood, Joseph and Mary, Nazareth. In Nazareth, the rainbow was black and white. That's how poor uh, they were. Uh, oh, you all know that joke. Eh? So uh, that's why. They didn't have a lot going for them. But... They were God's choice. And I want to tell you this morning, brothers and sisters, God will bless you right where you are. Right where you are at, God can bless you. It's easy to look at other people on Facebook, on Instagram, whatever, and see their activities going here, going there. They're chopping and chopping and eating out, doing this and that. The makeup is on point. Uh, what's that? Make Mac makeup they use. And... Uh, uh, but we must just focus on ourselves. You must just focus on you and your journey. You know, uh, focus on where you are at, at, your, uh, at your, that point in your life. Uh, me, this one year, things were so tight at home. And so for Christmas, I uh, bought my kids a set of batteries. And I put there a note. I said, toys not included. You know, that's... <laughs> That's how poor we were, you know, and so, uh, so, you know, you, but I gave them that with joy and with, uh, with gladness. So, no matter what your current situation may be, God meets you right where you are at, right where you are. Further, furthermore, he takes what little you have and he multiplies it. That's what God does. From five loaves and two fish, 5,000 people were fed. And there were 12 baskets left over. In the desert, God gave his people enough food every single day. Come on. God will supply your needs. Come on. God defied the laws of physics. He defied the laws of, of physics. From a rock, he brought forth water. Come on. That's the supernatural God that we serve. God, God took this couple from poor, obscure, and humble beginnings and elevated them to become the parents and guardians of the most powerful man in this world. And so if God can do that for them, he can do that for you. Come on, say hallelujah. So don't despise your small beginnings. Don't despise how much or how little you have. Celebrate the fact that you have Jesus in your life. And if he is with you, he will provide. He will take care. Say praise the Lord. So the first unusual occurrence is uh, the parents of Jesus. And then here's another unusual occurrence. Uh, uh, secondly, there was a double blessing. Say double blessing. Come on. When you read the Christmas story, uh, you not only read about Jesus. You not only read about Jesus. Uh, um, uh, 
John, the son of Zechariah and Elizabeth, is always linked to Jesus. In fact, in all the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, the first chapters are about John and Jesus. And so uh, uh, Luke 1, 26 says, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, uh, to a town uh, in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. The angel says, Greetings, highly favored one. Then begins telling Mary that she will give birth to a son and will call his name Jesus. He will be great, son of the Most High, sit on the throne. And in the same breath, same conversation, the angel tells her about her relative, Elizabeth, who's also miraculously pregnant. And Luke 1, 36, it says, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for she who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. And Dad shared with us last week how uh, when they greeted each other, the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, the babe leaped in her womb and she was filled with the Holy Spirit. But look at this. While God is blessing Mary and giving Mary the good news of that she will give birth, he tells her her relative also is pregnant and she was barren, but she is now six months pregnant and will also bring forth a son. Mary and Elizabeth received good news at the same time. And that was a double blessing for this family. My brothers and sisters, keep an eye out for God's double blessing in your life. Watch what God will do. Zechariah and Elizabeth, they served God faithfully. They were a prayerful couple. Mary and Joseph, Mary and Joseph good, were good people, good hearts. They were honorable to God. And suddenly, out of nowhere, they both received a double blessing from heaven. God is going to give you a double blessing. Come on. This Christmas, God is going to give you a double blessing. You've been faithful coming to church, uh, praying, honoring God, uh, sending your money. You've been uh, faithful to the kingdom. Watch how God is going to open doors for you. Watch how God is going to do something new in your life. Watch how God is going to send business your way, send contacts your way. 2023 is going to be blessed. Amen. We are excited for what God is going to do. And today I declare over you a double blessing. Say, I receive it in Jesus' name. Come on. You may not believe it like Mary and Elizabeth, but you are going to see it. Isaiah 61 says, instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. Say hallelujah. Job 42.10, it says, the Lord restored uh, uh, Job's losses when he prayed. The Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Come on, those promises are in the word of God. Say, Lord, I receive it. Come on. 2 Kings 2, it says, ask what I may do for you before I'm taken away. Elisha said, give me a double portion of your spirit. Come on, say double portion. God is going to bless you with a double portion. You know, the prodigal son received a double portion. One when he left and one when he returned. And my brothers and sisters, God is going to give you double for your trouble. <laughs> Say hallelujah. I don't know how it will come, when it will come, or, or, or who it will come from. But we are going to see double of what God is going to do. You'll get two blessings, maybe even more. Two sets of clothes you will get. New business deals, uh, new opportunities, special surprises, pleasant surprises. You'll get two hampers or two twins you will get. Uh, hopefully not two wives. Hopefully not two wives. But anyway, and say I received the double portion in Jesus' name. You're going to see that, I believe, today in the name of Jesus. And Shalda uh, uh, wants the two twins. Um, another usual, unusual thing, another unusual thing is that the last shall be first. Tell your neighbor the last. You know when Prince William and uh, the Duchess of Cambridge, when Kate Middleton gave birth to her firstborn son, their first child in 2013, uh, it was a story to fear. Millions around the world, they were glued to the media screens uh, to see all the details. The baby's birth was to be announced uh, to the world in a formal declaration placed, uh, 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 placed in front of Buckingham Palace uh, on an easel. 
And uh, it was that Isa was the same one used to announce uh, Prince William's birth 31 years ago. And uh, President Obama, various other world leaders, they all sent congratulatory uh, messages. And Kate Middleton, she had a team of 20 professionals that were dedicated to her in the hospital. 20 people. Can you imagine? Two obstetricians, three midwives, three anesthetists, uh, four surgical staff, two special care staff, four pediatricians, one lab technician, and three to four managers. And so that was a, an earthly natural birth. No doubt the birth of Jesus Christ was one of the most important and uh, most spectacular events in human history. And so in Luke chapter 8, when the angels announced the birth of Jesus to poor shepherds, this was an a unusual occurrence. The, the shepherds were out there washing their socks, uh, I mean, uh, watching their flocks by night. They were out taking care, taking care of the sheep. So Jesus' birth was announced to poor shepherds. This was the king of heaven and earth. This was the birth of one who would be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This was the one they would call Alpha and Omega, Finisher, Author and Finisher, Good Shepherd, Living Word, the Messiah, Lion of the tribe of Judah. And the list goes on. This man was greater than anyone who went before him and anyone who came after him. But... Uh, uh, his birth was announced to poor, lowly shepherds watching their flocks by night. And uh, you, shepherds were despised in those days. Shepherds, uh, they were the lowest class of people. Uh, they were looked down upon by society uh, because they were migrants who uh, they often slept with the animals. And so obviously they were a little bit smelly and they were rough and uneducated men. They were not allowed as witnesses in a court of law because nobody trusted their word. And also if something went missing, this was attributed to the shepherds. They were the ones who would normally steal. But yet, it is to this group of people that the angels announced the birth of Jesus Christ. Luke 2.10, they said, Do not be afraid. I bring you good tidings of great joy to all people. There is born today uh, to you in the city of David a Savior. The last people one would expect became the first people to receive uh, the announcement, this important message. And this is the day when the last shall be first and the first shall be last. You who are despised, you who are rejected by others, God is going to bless you. Come on. You who are downcast, you who are discouraged, you who have hit rock bottom, you who are in despair, the God of hope is going to pick you up. You who are rejected for that promotion, watch and see how God is going to raise you up. You who were sidelined, you were discarded from uh, your blessings. Watch how God is going to restore those blessings. Come on. You who were left behind while other people moved on. Other people got blessed. You were left behind. God is going to bless you. Come on. You who face some losses, you face some challenges, face some difficulties. Your day of breakthrough is coming in Jesus' name. Why? The last shall be first. That's the Bible's pattern. God calls us the apple of his eye. God's word says, I will give you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad. The shepherds who were last in man's eyes, they were first in God's eyes. Come on, say praise the Lord. And so it doesn't matter what people may say. Doesn't matter what you may have been through. All that matters is that God is with you. And he will push you to the forefront. He will bless you. He will send you to the front of the queue. Say praise the Lord. I receive that in Jesus name. Uh, uh, my time is up. But lastly I want to say to you this morning. And I'm telling you about unusual stuff that occurred at the first Christmas. Lastly uh, the unusual thing was that a star follows a man. 
A star follows a man. And you know, in this modern era, uh, many of us follow the stars of the day with social media and all of that. Men and women follow Kim Kardashian. Even the men follow Kim Kardashian, Justin Bieber. And uh, you know who, who's Santa's favorite pop star? Do you know? Uh, Beyond Slay, because she, because she slays, you know? So, uh, yeah, but they say they are... They, they say there are three stages of man. He believes in Santa Claus. He doesn't believe in Santa Claus. And he becomes Santa Claus. So that's the three stages we will all go through. Anton is laughing there. But, uh, you know, uh, our kids, uh, they, know that, um, they know that we buy the gifts for them. We don't tell, us, tell them Santa uh, brings the gifts. Because if you tell them a white guy... Uh, with a white beard, brought them gifts, they will think it's Opa coming <laughs> to, to give them gifts. So we just tell them, we buy the gifts. And, uh, you know, uh, we tell them the reality. They think it's Shalda's father. And so, you know, the, and uh, there's, uh, you know, the, we follow stars. There's housewives of Orange County, Atlanta, whatever. And now we have the real housewives of Johannesburg. You saw that? And uh, housewives of, uh, what's the other place? Pretoria. 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 Uh, housewives of Pretoria. And uh, we don't need to watch Housewives of Phoenix. We don't need that because we come to church, we get all the gossip. You know? So, so we don't need the real Housewives of Phoenix. But uh, uh, Tom Cruise was in South Africa this week. And uh, we saw that. And we follow Lil Wayne, uh, Kanye West, Yeezy. We follow Yeezy, he's breezy, the baby, all of that. Soccer stars, Neymar, 181 million Instagram followers. Cristiano Ronaldo, 495 million Instagram followers. And tonight we'll all be watching stars, Lionel Messi, 372 Instagram followers. Take on Kylian Mbappe. 73 million Instagram followers. And here's hoping Messi will get his first World Cup trophy and France will win back-to-back uh, -back, uh, uh, World Cups. Who's supporting uh, France here? Let's see. Argentina? Okay. Okay. All right. But, uh, you know, in Matthew chapter 2, the wise men were searching for he who has been born king of the Jews. We have seen his star... And we have come to worship him. The wise men, they were following the star. And when the wise men left Herod's palace, the star moved. And they, again, they followed the star. And it came and stood over the place where, where Jesus was. And uh, Matthew 2.10, it says, When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And notice that they were following the star wherever it went. But the unusual thing for us this morning is that the star was following Jesus. While they followed the star, the star was following Jesus. And I want you to know this morning, there are some powerful things in this world, but none more powerful than Jesus Christ. I want you to know today, there are some influential and mighty people in this world, man. They can, hey, they can sell you, they can buy you. There's some powerful people in this world, but none of them are superior to Jesus Christ. There are some great things in this world, like mutton bunnies. Mutton bunnies are beautiful, a beautiful thing. But uh, uh, none more powerful than the first bunny in the world. That was from the Bible when uh, uh, Jesus made a fish bunny with five loaves and two fish. And he multiplied that and fed 5,000. None more powerful than Jesus. There are powerful countries in the world uh, who can boast great wealth, military st uh, strength, advances in technology, but they are all not more powerful than our God. God can send one tornado. God can send one flood and all countries will be scrambling. You know why? Because he is the all-powerful God. 
Psalm 95, 3, the Lord is a great God, great King above all gods. Isaiah 66, 1, heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. Isaiah 55, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways. If the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways and thoughts higher than your thoughts. God is great. Uh, what, Psalm 147.5 Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. Revelation 22 I am the Alpha and Omega beginning and the end. The first and the last. And because we serve this great big God that is greater than all others. I want you to know nothing is too difficult for our God. Nothing is too difficult. You must know today, there is no situation beyond the reach of our mighty God. Say praise the Lord. Understand today that with man, there are things that are impossible. There are th situations that seem impossible. There are challenges that seem impossible to overcome. But you must know, understand and believe today that with God, all things are possible. Say hallelujah. Doesn't matter how bad your troubles are. God can get you out of it. Say praise the Lord. I don't care how much of drugs or alcohol is binding you or bound you or whatever it is. God can deliver you in the name of Jesus. I don't care how much money you lost. How many assets you lost. How bad your business is at the moment. If God owns the cattle on a thousand hills, he can supply your needs. He can restore what the devil has stolen. He can raise you up and pick you up higher than you were before. I don't care how big the needs are this Christmas. Our great God will provide for you in Jesus' name. Come on, say praise the Lord. We serve a great God, my beloved, my sisters and brothers. We serve a great and powerful God, high above all that we can imagine. And so God will bless you. This was unusual. People follow the star, but the star followed Jesus. And we serve a supernatural, wonder-working, powerful God, wonderful counselor, everlasting father, prince of priests, the great I am. Come on, let's stand up and praise God this morning. Let's praise him for his goodness. Let's praise him for his mercy. Father, we thank you that you are a great God. We thank you for your greatness. We thank you, Lord. Father, our needs seem insignificant. Our small lives seem insignificant. But we thank you. What is my man that you are mindful of him? Thank you that you have our name in your book. You have written our names in the palm of your hand. You know the very hairs of our head. We thank you that every person here will be blessed, oh Father. This season, you will take care of all needs. You will provide. You will raise us up. Father, we will see miracles. We will see the great things that you have done. Father, we bless you today. We honor you. We honor you. We worship you. We thank you, Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on, speak in your tongue this morning. Come on, morning. worship him. Worship speak him. in your tongue. Oh, come. Let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Christ the Lord. He alone.
God is going to change things. This Christmas is going to be an altogether different one because Jesus is with us. The Holy Spirit is with us. The Lamb of God. Say, God, do unusual things for me. Do unusual things for me. Do unusual things for me. Hallelujah. Pastor Brian is praying for all of us this morning. Receive the blessing of the Lord as he prays for us today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a round of praise today. today. Oh, hallelujah. Our God is great, isn't he? Our God is mighty. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your presentation today. Thank you for your son that presented the word of God Amen. to us. Thank you for all the people that were involved in your birth. But we know you are here this morning. We feel your presence. We feel your spirit. You're all over us. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the people that you use. Father, many people that you use for your birth. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. Even you used Elizabeth, Lord, and Zacharias. You used both of them, Lord, to, Lord, to confirm your birth. And we thank you for that. We thank you even for, for, for Joseph, Father. Lord, thank you for the angel. Lord, thank you for the spirit that was upon Joseph. Lord, thank you for the spirit, the Holy Spirit that was upon Joseph and even on Mary that you were able to say, I am going to be the handmaiden of the Lord. She wasn't afraid, Lord. She surrendered her life to you. Even for Joseph, her father, we thank you that he was able to listen to the angel. When the angel spoke to him, he didn't go against that angel because the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. We pray today, Father, in the name of Jesus. We know, Lord, there's a lot of things that you have in life for us. You have a lot of work that you want us to do. Father, we pray today in the name of Jesus. We believe your angels are speaking today. Your angels are speaking to your people. We believe today you have a word, oh God. You have a leading today. We pray today, Father, that even if the angels come to us, we will listen to the voice of angels like the way Joseph listens, oh God. So bless your people today. Have your hand upon them. We love you. We cherish you. We, we love you for all what you mean to us. We thank you, Father. We bless you. What can we, what can we do without you? Where can we go, Father? You are our hope. You are the hope of our salvation. You are the strength of our life. My God, you are everything to us. My God, we love you. We cherish you. We believe this Christmas is never going to be the same for us. We believe we'll be lifted up. We believe we'll be making ways where there will be no ways. We believe that, Father. And we receive all that. We receive it, Father. And we thank you. We pray for a special hand upon your son today that shared the word of God. We pray a blessing upon his life, upon his family also. Bless your congregation today. Bless each and every one. Let each and every one leave this morning knowing that they have been blessed by the Lord our God. May they know today when they leave this place, they're not going empty, Father. They're going with the blessings of God. I know that. I believe that. And Lord, we receive that in the name of Jesus. We love you. We cherish you. And we praise you. We thank you all for what you've done and what you're going to do. We ask it all in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Come on, give the Lord a good praise offering. Let me hear you shout a praise. Now give the man of God a good round of applause. And give our Lord Jesus Christ the praise. Ah, oh, man, you may take your seat. That was an exhilarating presentation. I liked it. I liked it. I think he did a great job this morning. Thank you, sir. That was beautiful. That was good. That's good. Sometimes when you've read the Bible so many times and you've preached so many sermons, you wonder what God... Priscilla, what are you doing on that side? Oh, you got moved. All right. Anyway... <laughs> Yeah, when sometimes you wonder what you're going to speak about. And Sid did that so beautifully this morning. Thank you. God bless you. We want to say happy birthday to Shakira, Vasanta, Sammy, Radha, Charlize, Ethan, Kisten. We're going to post you a happy birthday message. We're not singing this morning. 
Condolences, nothing, thank God. Communion, no communion. Congratulations, all our baptism candidates. Where are the baptism candidates? Candidates here? Please stand for us. All of you got baptized? Ah, oh, lovely. Give them a good round of applause. Brand new in the Lord. God bless you. I want to say thank you to Tiren and Vineshri. They treated everybody so well. They also provided refreshment. Thank you. God bless you abundantly. Thank you to Alistair. Now you can park decently in the parking lot. Thank you, Alistair. We appreciate getting your friends to come and uh, mark the place. Give them a good round of applause. Just one tip about the parking. When the guard tells you park there, if you park properly according to the way he asks you to, you'll get out next to no time. So please remember that as well. And then everybody who assisted in the parking.